Welcome back. I am so excited to introduce our next guest, who is the Chief Marketing Officer of Sunmar Healthcare and also a very good friend of mine, Bryce Porter. Bryce, thank you so much for joining us today. Excellent. Good to be here. Good yeah, to be here. it's so fun. fun. It's, we, we haven't seen each other for months because we've been at home, so it's nice to see you on video. Yeah. Likewise. <laughs> this may be the new way we get to visit with our friends. I know. I know. I'm hoping one day we get to see our friends again. I know. I, I think so. I think we're going to have to. But Bryce, one of the things that um, you and I are both passionate about is making sure that our elderly population are taken care of. And um, Sunmar is, a, is an exceptional um, skilled nursing um, company. And I'd love to have you just describe a little bit about what you're doing to try to help protect our population with the uh, strike team. Yeah, so at, at Sunmar, I've been with Sunmar for over six years. And we, first and foremost, it's, it's been an incredibly uh, satisfying thing to see the staff rise to the occasion. I mean, it's with so much uncertainty with with, edu with more information that's coming out each day about how to handle both the impact and the spread of this virus, we've got really remarkable frontline heroes that are, that are completely dedicated to doing what they can to keep people safe. And, and, it's, um, and it's a pretty dynamic thing. And I mean, we, we operate in a pretty dynamic industry in general. You've got so many different things that are coming at you on a 24 hour basis, but this definitely has tested us as much as it has anybody because it's uh, it's so new and uh, so we just have to adjust on the fly. And so, for, you know, what we're looking to do is, you know, what are ways that we can uh, do our part to really minimize that spread, uh, to take care of those that are in house, both of our our staff and our residents, in a way that's um, that makes a big impact now, but also is sustainable. So we've been looking at different technologies. We've been looking at our best practices. We've been looking at our partnerships to say, what, what can we do in all these areas in order to make, um, make our environment safer, make our staff safer, and make the, make the patients that we care for um, comfortable in that environment. And I feel like we've done a really good job so far. I'd be happy, happy to tell so you. What is, what is the role of the strike team? First of all, I see them wearing superhero costumes. I totally do. I just feel like they, they deserve it. And I feel like I, I'm going to be descended upon by people who know what they're doing and they're going to help me. <laughs> well, I've been in some of the facilities and they really do know exactly how to take care of these people. It's, it's really incredible to me because, you know, with such a vulnerable population, you have to take extra care as we all know. And what I'm hoping to learn as well is what are some things that we can do that, that Bryce and his team are doing to protect our most vulnerable population that we can apply to the larger ecosystem. I think there are a lot of lessons learned. So yeah, so tell us more about the strike team, Bryce. Yeah, so, so when you're looking at infection control, what we first did is we realized we've got some really fantastic experts already in house. When we looked, we were looking at this in, in March and fortunately for years in the making, we had hired uh, an infection uh, prevention specialist. She's been with our team for many years already. And so it was a pretty natural fit for her to really take this baton, so to speak, and run. Um, what, what's really interesting is we looked and said, okay, what technology is available? And so we've, you've probably seen it in a lot of different television commercials lately, but you see these electrostatic sprayers. Mm -hmm. And if you've been flying on planes, you've seen that they, you know, in between each flight, they're taking these sprayers and, mm -hmm. and using chemicals to, to disinfect. And, and what we've done is we found a, um, an S a CDC approved um, solution that uh, is a surface uh, protectant that uh, really prevents pathogens from, from uh, surviving there for up over 90 days. Wow. And so what we did is we, we quickly uh, were able to, to purchase these. They've been really hard to come by, as you can imagine. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. So we were able to get these on our team. And what's really cool um, in one of one of the properties that we that we provide support to in Riverside, we have our um, our maintenance director that uh, that had encountered a you know his whole family had had an had a um, uh, an experience with COVID that was really challenging, and so he really established you know probably more than ever uh, 
a, a new appreciation for infection control. And so it was the, a, a great fit to couple him up and make him our new strike team leader and, and match him up with our infection prevention specialist. And, and so they built out the strike team. We built, we, we got a truck, we've outfitted the team. We got them with all the, the, the supplies and equipment that they needed. And basically it's pretty simple. They just go from one building to the next. It takes about three to five days per building. They're going to go in, they're going to train the staff on and then they basically are going to spray all of the, the common area um, surfaces, both inside the, the, like the hallways and whatnot, but also the resident rooms. And so mm. they just go from building to building and, um, and help disinfect our, build, our, uh, our properties and make them safer. So is the disinfectant like a repellent or is it like Teflon? Or tell me more about it. What does it do? Yeah, so the spray itself, um, it, it, I mean, it's just a, a common spray that's going to kill any of the pathogens that are on the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, for, as long as you allow it the proper time to dry, mm -hmm. then it, the, the protective components of the solution will last for over 90 days. Wow. Um, you can continue to clean over top of them, so it doesn't mean that, that, um, that, it, it, that it stays that way. It, be, mm -hmm. it becomes clean, and then you have to you know, you've got to maintain that, but the, the protective, you know, components in the solution will last for 90 days. So if you're, I mean, if you've ever been to the Bay area, kind of like what they do with the golden gate bridge, right? They start painting it. And by the time they get to the end, it's yeah, time so, to start yeah. painting it again. So they start <laughs> at the beginning. So at least the way our calendar works with our strike team, they've got about three months to get through the 25 buildings that we support in Southern California. And then once they finish, they'll just start back at the top of the lineup and, and continue moving through it again. That is so I'm assuming that the materials are non-toxic. They're all, um, you know, as they're not invasive in a different way to the population, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's obviously definitely important. And so it's a CDC approved solution. It's been used at the Pentagon, the Mayo Clinic and other leading healthcare institutions. So it's a medical grade um, cleaning solution. There's, there, there, we looked at a lot of different technologies, and this is one of others that I know people have found efficacy using, but, but there's technologies that use in an operating room, for example, using uh, UV, li UV lighting and other, other features, but you also, you know, you, there's some risks. They have to clear those rooms. They have to be clear out overnight, and nobody can go in them, or else you expose yourself to some, some, uh, some, uh, a lot of problematic um, rays and uh, in that regard obviously we don't have that luxury we can't just shut down overnight we've got 24 right. hour facilities 24 hour care. that we're operating so there's there's certainly other methodologies as well this one works really well for our team we've realized you know we're uh, two and a half months in and we've got 21 of our buildings complete they're just right on track and and once we and, and we just have been fine-tuning it as we go so there's a lot to learn and, and we've kind of jumped in it with, with two feet, but we're seeing some really good outcomes at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. Not only on, you know, cause the, the Department of Health is gonna come through with um, COVID related surveys and they're in our buildings often. They've been really impressed with uh, the, the um, timeliness of the group and how quickly we've been able to mobilize and create a safe environment when, when uh, when others might not be quite as um, advanced or sophisticated at this point. Well, one thing that I want to say that I'm so impressed with is that, you know, I feel like skilled nursing sometimes gets a bad rap. You know, you think, oh, the hospitals do all this great stuff, but skilled nursing, you guys are the real heroes of this, you know? Like, you guys are the ones who are treating the vast majority of the people with COVID, you know? And so I think that what I meant by bad rap is like, you're not being celebrated in the media nearly as much as you should be yeah, no, for, being I, I able to, for being able to like prevent and treat what's really going like the very worst of the cases and, um, and prevent so, so many. And I just was reading some California statistics um, just now, and you guys have been able to, to prevent the vast, vast majority of people from, it, from ever getting it. So I think it was a huge credit to you guys. Yeah, no, I appreciate you saying that. I, I, I joking, I jest because you're you're right. I mean, it's skilled nursing facilities are are not the the place that people are looking to go to, especially right now. 
and um, it's it's typically viewed or or become a unfortunately a, a bit of a punching bag from for in the media because it's an easy target. You've got mm-hmm. obviously you've got a population of of residents and seniors, pre- predominantly seniors, mm-hmm. that are the most vulnerable population. So mm-hmm. when you're treating the most po- vulnerable population, and that's your entire you know customer base, so to speak, then of course you're going to see. You know, you're going to see um, infection that happens, unfortunately. Um, it, it has more to do with not avoiding it happening, but what do you do once it happens? Mm-hmm. And how do you respond to that? And how do you safeguard them? So, uh, yeah, it's, um, it is, uh, it's a, not an easy task, but it's one that we're up to, that we're up to take on. So well, think- we're grateful because you've got responsibility. You're, you're that sandwich in the middle, right? You've got both your employees mm-hmm. and their families who are vulnerable. And then you've got your residents and their families who are watching you very, yeah. very closely to make sure that you're getting the job done. So yeah, I think you deserve those superhero costumes. See, I was right. <laughs> no, it's funny you say that in uh, back in April, we had an opportunity, you know, it's fun, especially in Southern California, In-N-Out Burger is something people are really familiar with. And, and so for over the years, I've been in this industry for 15 years, and, and you'll always look for opportunities and fun things that you can do with staff to um, appreciate them and show them uh, our gratitude and, and give them that spotlight that they deserve and the, being on the front lines. And, and so uh, I called the, the In-N-Out guy and I said, hey, can we get the In-N-Out trucks to all of our buildings? And generally speaking, it's about a two month to three month wait to, uh, to get in the rotation. But at that particular moment, he said, well, actually we have zero events on the books. So wow. you're welcome to have as many trucks as you want. So mm-hmm. in and out burger was great. They, they, um, they were great to work with us and, and get our, get the trucks to all the locations. And anyway, but I, I, we say that because from a superhero perspective, that was actually our theme. We created t-shirts for the staff and, uh, had fun with it saying superheroes wear scrubs and and so they've had fun wearing those shirts but then also doing kind of superhero dress up times so they they have to cover it with their ppe and their gowns and their masks but it's under there it's kind of like superman with his cape <laughs> right. everything is more fun with a cape <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it is so it's it really amazing to me all everything that your team does to keep everyone safe and and it just makes me feel so much comfort. My dad is, um, my dad is, uh, his health is not good. And a very real possibility in the short term that he will be in one of your facilities. And, and so I really appreciate the fact that I can trust, you know, Sunmar to be able to take care of my family and to be able to make sure that that prevention is there. And so anyway, I just want to say on behalf of all of the adult children you know, thank you right. for taking such good care of our parents. Yeah, you're welcome. And, you know, my, my own father is in a skilled nursing facility in, uh, in Nevada. And it definitely, when you're in that circumstance, and it, it definitely helps you understand and take a different angle on you know, not only the type of questions you'd ask and the information you get, but, but being, being responsible for that communication and understanding what's going on. It's really difficult being a family member of a resident at a facility who cannot visit. So mm-hmm. I haven't been able to visit my dad in person mm-hmm. since the end of March. Yeah. And so, so that's a new complexity where, um, you, you know, a facility and similarly in our facilities, you're trying to safeguard the residents from any incoming infection. A lot of people, even if you're asymptomatic, you didn't necessarily get tested because mm-hmm. you didn't have symptoms to know that to be tested. And so you could be transmitting that. And so it's been, it's been a difficult kind of juggling act to manage those expectations. You want to make sure the families are informed and, and it's tough being on this side of it with the father that's in a facility and not being able to see him other than, you know, virtually we FaceTime with him. But other than that, it's been, it's been, um, it certainly gives you a different appreciation when you've got a team that's a lot, you know, very committed to the communication and care, even if loved ones can't be there by their side to, to kind of advocate for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and which, which really underscores the importance that trust has when you just, when you know that, you know, everything is being done for your loved one that can't possibly be done. So, yeah. 
<laughs> well, Bryce, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm so grateful to you and all of the other frontliners that are help keeping us safe and keeping our, our seniors safe as well. Thank you for doing what you're doing. We'll be right back.